name's Sarah Meekle and in this episode of The Bride we're going to be taking a few steps down the aisle to talk about ceremonies and receptions. The ceremony, even a humanist or civil ceremony, is still the most traditional part of any wedding. But there's even room to personalise this. You can decorate the aisle or add personal readings. Walking down the aisle, your music can be canned, piped or even a string quartet. But if you are bringing live musicians, make sure there's enough space for them. And make sure bagpipes don't deafen people in smaller venues. Walking down the aisle, the bridesmaids usually go first ahead of the bride, preceded by the page boys or flower girls. Going back up the aisle, the bride and groom will lead, followed by bridesmaids, groomsmen, family and the rest of the guests. Make sure everyone knows where they're sitting and what's expected of them so this part runs smoothly. Make sure there's enough room for the bridal party in the front rows and if you are having readings, make sure these people are seated near the front and with an aisle seat. The next question that usually pops up is which side of the aisle do I go on? Facing the celebrant, the grooms will be on the right and the brides on the left. Traditionally, the groom's family and friends go on his side and the brides on hers. But apart from the front rows, it doesn't really matter. And if one side of the family is a lot bigger than the other, it can end up looking a bit uneven. So if you have ushers, get them to spread people around and don't have anyone hiding in the back rows. For the vows, don't worry if you trip up, get tongue tied or even shed a tear or two. This can help break the tension and give everyone a laugh. And grooms, if your bride does look ready to break up, an accidental trip could save the day. Now, regarding the signing the register photographs that everyone ends up with, these are usually better if they're posed, as the photographer is just snapping away while you're signing, they only really get the crown of your head. Plus, if you pose for these photos, the real wedding license can be moved safely out of the way. So you've been out, had endless photos taken, had a chat with your family and maybe had a chance to down something sparkly. But now comes the part that most grooms and best men dread, the meal, which means the speeches. Now guys, I can't stress this enough. Go easy on the drinks beforehand as you're not nearly as funny as you think you are when you're drunk and it can help avoid any unwanted ad-libs in an otherwise perfect speech. The father of the bride is generally on safe ground. A childhood story can be good or a little story about the first time you met your new son-in-law can be quite fun too. For the groom, there are thousands of tips for speeches online but generally, as long as you mention your new wife, tell her you love her, anything else is fine. But don't slag off your new family. And for the best man, tales of drunken debauchery, arrests, arson and exes don't tend to go down well. Try and think of a story that reflects your friendship with the groom. You can add a few little jibes in there too, as long as they're not too cruel. And remember to thank the bridesmaids and the family if the groom forgot. Otherwise, just have a great enthusiastic speech. But you don't have to stick with tradition. The bride is allowed to make a speech too, and actually lots of brides are doing that nowadays, so we'd encourage you to give it a go. And remember, if you're doing any slideshows or having gifts, make sure you have everything sorted before you start, as there's nothing worse than cutting off a speech halfway through because you left the baby photo in your room. The next thing that seems to cast fear into the hearts of newlyweds is their first dance. So we're stepping away from the Busby Hotel to talk about the dancing. So we've talked about the ceremony and the reception, but the next thing people worry about is the first dance. Now we're all aware of the slightly embarrassed swaying shuffle that can creep its way into the wedding dance, but we're not all professional dancers and we shouldn't all be on Strictly. So if just doing a basic step and holding your partner close is what matters to you, then go for it. But if you do want to be a bit more elaborate, apart from taking dance classes, what can you do? Well, first of all, pick a song that you can dance to. Your favourite song may be the one that means most, but irregular rhythms and jarring music can be really awkward to dance to. Keep it short and sweet so you don't wear yourself out and you don't bore your guests. Make sure your DJ or band know when to call the guests up so you don't have any gate crashers. Another thing to think about is your style of wedding dress might affect the music you're playing. A jive might suit your rock and roll themed wedding but not your tight fitting mermaid dress. A tango might be your dream first dance but it might not suit your elaborate princess dress with hoops and bustles. A good tip is to practice in your wedding shoes or something similar so you feel confident on the night. Also, think about your venue and the size of the dance floor. Try and get a practice in there if you can. We would suggest mastering a few key moves beforehand so you can start off with style, spice up in the middle and end with a bang. Having said that, don't try anything too elaborate as one small slip can ruin a beautiful night. So, 
We are here in a secret locations night with Heather and Solus to demonstrate a few moves for us. On to the dancing. In the opening we saw Heather wearing a dress by Freya Designer Dressmaking. For the waltz she's wearing a dress from Dragonfly Dress Designs. A good first position for the waltz is when the leader offers his hand, the partner takes the hand, then they bring their elbows together. Heather and Solis are showing us a simple waltz with a few flourishes. Here's a demonstration of an underarm turn. The lady raises her hand to 90 degrees and the man turns her. This is a demonstration of a box step, which is a good starting step to learn. Here, Heather and Solis are going to take us through a full jive sequence. Here's a simple dip which makes a good finale. <laughs> 